Hello and welcome to Mr Barton's Gapminder World video number 8. Now, over the course of the next few weeks, I thought it'd be a good idea to look at employment across the world. So I'm going to be trying to dig out some interesting trends, differences and similarities in jobs and employment histories of countries around the world. So to start the ball rolling, I thought a good one to look at will be the labour force participation rate. So as ever, let me paint you a little scenario and see if you can think what the world's going to look like. So, on the x-axis, I'm going to have our usual measure of wealth, which is income per person. And on the y-axis, I'm going to start with the male labour force participation rate. So what this does, it gets all the males in every country aged between 15 and 64, and it works out what percentage of them are in employment. So, what's that going to look like? Positive correlation, the richer you are, the more males are in employment. Negative correlation, no correlation. And where do you think each country is going to be? Let's have a look. So here's the graph there back in 1980. Now I reckon that ooh, it's certainly negative-ish correlation, maybe fairly weak. But I, which I think is quite interesting because that suggests the richer you are, the less percentage of your males are in employment, which is maybe counterintuitive. Maybe that's just a one-off for kind of 1980. So let's just uh, move things on for the next 30 years. Now lots of movement going on that we'll talk about in a second. But look at that, that's 2007, the last year that the data is available for. If I just highlight the regions, you'll see the African countries, there's a quite a big spread among them, but quite a few of them have over 90% of their males, um, between 15 and 64, in employment. Um, contrast that with some of the Europe and Central Asian countries. I mean, you've got a few outliers. Moldova, just over half of its males in employment. But if I focus on some of the countries we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks, for example, the United Kingdom, 83%. So it's not a case that the richer you are, the more of your males are in employment. And it's more, it seems to be more almost like a cultural, regional thing. So if I highlight, for example, the Middle East and North African countries, they tend to have fairly low levels, even though there's quite a wide range of um, different income, uh, different wealths in those countries. I wonder what happens now if I was to change this from males to females. Now, what's that going to look like? Still a negative correlation? Still the African countries tending to be the ones with the high levels of employment? Let's have a look. So let's change this. Go down to work. Go down to labour force participation. And we'll go for females aged 15 to 64. What's this going to look like? Well, there you go there. Now, the first thing that springs to my mind is what a massive range. You go in here from about 15% of females in work up to around about 90%. And which countries are what, ones where females are highly employed? Well, again, if you look at that, above 80%, it tends to be the African countries. Sure, there's some African countries where it's very low levels of female employment, but as a general rule, the African countries tend to have quite a high percentage of their females in employment. Contrast that with the Middle Eastern countries. Very, very low levels. And again, that suggests to me it's not about how rich a country is. It's about the tradition. It's about the values. It's about the history of those countries. Again, if I just pick a, pick a couple of these. Saudi Arabia, 20%. That's one in five of females between 15 and 64 in work. Contrast that with... Um, Brundi, 90%. Contrast that with Tanzania, 89%. Our friend China, 77%. So I think that's quite interesting. India, 36%. Again, if we just have a look at some of the countries we've looked at in the last couple of weeks. United Kingdom, 70% of its females um, in work. United States, 69%. Now, what happens if I put those two things together? So we'll keep females on the y-axis, but we'll whiz the male labour force participation rate on the x-axis. What's this going like to look like and which countries are going to be where? Let's have a look here. So I go to work, I go to labour force participation, and I would like, please, the male labour force participation rate. Well, there you go there. Once again, it's the African countries in the top right. High proportion of males, high proportion of females. But it's a massive, massive spread. Again, it's the Middle Eastern countries towards the left. But again, there's a big spread. It's not such a clear trend. And if I just play this just to end how things have changed over time. Let's have a look. Lots and lots of movement. Lots of Western European countries dive into the bottom left. All sorts going on there. That needs a bit more investigating. So perhaps you could take a little look at that. Hope that was useful. See you next week. Bye-bye.